Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a Falcon Kayak sail on one of our skin-on-frame boats. Now, before we get started here, just to avoid any confusion, Falcon sails are not produced by us, they just coincidentally happen to share the same name. Also, this is not going to be a performance review of this product, because due to a back injury, I haven't been able to get enough cockpit time with these sails to give you a full evaluation. What I will say though, is that they are incredibly well built and are highly regarded by experienced kayak sailors. I've gotten multiple positive reviews from my own kayak building students who have used them, including my friend Claire, who used one on her thousand mile journey down the Columbia River in an F1 kayak that she built herself. So why don't we start out here just by taking a look at the sail fully rigged on the kayak. Falcon Sails uses a triangular shaped sail form. The sail itself is Dacron, it's reinforced, it's battened, and it's actually an airfoil shape, which means that you're gonna get a lot more power when you're heading across the wind and when you're heading a little bit into the wind. Also, you've got a nice couple windows here so you can see where you're going. This sail uses a four stay support system, and then of course we've got the uphaul line coming off the front. We've got the sheet coming down off the boom and through a traveler that I designed specifically for these boats and then back to a cleat at the front of the cockpit. And all that rigging is more or less pretty standard, but when you come in a little bit closer, you can see there's a lot of really smart details on this sail system. So for example, in addition to the sheet, this sail also has a boom vang, which is this diagonal line right here, which holds the boom down to maintain the sail shape, which is gonna give you more power when you're sailing across the wind and when you're sailing into the wind. Although it is gonna give you a little bit more of a healing moment, which is why it's better to start sailing without this and then add it when you get more experience. And then coming in a little bit closer on some of the hardware, you can see that instead of having an eye riveted to the mast where you tie all the stays through, they actually have a dedicated junction ring right here, which is anodized aluminum, and it comes with all of these stays pre-rigged. The hold down for the sail is also really smart. It comes right off the tack of the sail and then through the boom itself down to an adjustable cleat. The mast base itself is a solid aluminum universal joint that's mounted on a plate that slides on and off of a separate base plate so you can take it off the boat really easily. And then just little things like these stay clips here, this is a lot easier to operate than a shackle and it's a lot safer than a snap clip because it's not accidentally gonna catch any other lines. And the fact that it opens like this means that you can add a little bit of additional tension to your stay line and then you can kind of cam it closed like that, and that's gonna take all the slack out of your stay, so you're gonna have a nice tight system. And finally, you probably noticed this already, but the mast and the boom are made out of carbon fiber, but they're also modular, so you can break them apart, and they're gonna fold down smaller for transportation, and it's worth noting that this is really thick carbon fiber tubing. This is super high quality stuff. If you were to try to just buy the tubing alone for this sale, you would spend at least $200 just on that alone. Now, in addition to the build quality on this sale, the other great thing is that it comes with all the hardware you're gonna need and each pack is individually labeled so you know exactly what each piece is and where it goes. The standard version of this kit is gonna give you everything that you need to install one of these on a fiberglass or a plastic boat, and there's an additional hardware pack that you can select specifically for installation on our skin on frame kayaks. The installation instructions that come with this sail are also really excellent, but once again, they're designed for a hard shell kayak. So what I'm gonna do here today in this video is walk you through the sail installation on one of my own modern skin on frame kayak designs and you might be able to adapt these instructions to other skin on frame kayaks as well, but keep in mind, I can't make any guarantees about the strength or the safety of this sail setup on any kayaks that I didn't personally design. So I've gone ahead and taken the sail off the kayak so we can see things a little bit more clearly. And before we get into the sail install, I wanna talk about framing reinforcements, deck line setup, and also the possibility of using a rudder. So starting with the framing reinforcements, if you're building a kayak from our course materials, early on in the course, there's gonna be a video that covers all of the changes you wanna to make to the framework to make it a little bit stronger to put a sail on. Now, I have had students in the past put a sail on just a standard built F1 or LPB kayak, and I haven't heard any reports of anything failing yet, 
but I think it is much better if you do add these particular reinforcements because sailing does put a lot of stress on the boat. Now, moving on to rudders, coming to the back of this F1 kayak, you can see that I've installed this Smart Track rudder. And normally, I am not a fan of rudders on skin on frame kayaks because they're heavy, they're expensive, they take time to install. It's just one more complex thing that could potentially get broken. And most importantly, generally speaking, they are not necessary on my skin on frame kayak designs, with one exception, and that is sailing. Now, Technically, it is possible to sail an F1 or an LPB without a rudder, but I find that the rudder just massively increases the control and the performance, and therefore also the safety of your sailing setup. And so, if you think you're going to be serious about kayak sailing, sailing I would say at the very least, you wanna modify the boat so you can add a rudder in the future if you decide that you need one. And those modifications are pretty minimal, so there's really no reason not to do it. Now, in this case, for my own personal kayak, you can see that I chose a Smart Track rudder. And the reason I like this rudder is because it's got really tight steering control. It's got a solid anodized aluminum rudder body, and it's also got really good efficiency with the foil-shaped blade. However, depending on the situation, sometimes I would choose a select rudder instead. And then coming forward to the foot braces, you can see I've got kind of the opposite thing going on. Even though I've got a smart track rudder in the back, I decided to put select rudder control foot braces in the front right here. And that just has to do with my own personal preferences. There are definitely times in which I think it would make more sense to use the smart track toe pilot foot braces instead. So I don't wanna get into any more detail on rudder systems specifically in this video, but if you're interested in learning more about which products you might wanna choose, just depending on your own personal situation, check out the separate skin on frame rudder installation mini course that we put up on our website. It has a huge amount of detail about choosing different components and also a step-by-step -step guide to how to install them in a skin on frame kayak. And that's not something I really did to make much money because honestly, I am never gonna sell enough of those to turn a profit. It's just something I did because there is no good rudder installation information out there for skin on frame boats. And without good installation instructions, rudder installs can be pretty frustrating in general. Now, moving on to the deck line setup, most of this is just the standard deck rigging that I put on all of my modern skin on frame sea kayaks. But the reason I wanted to talk about it is because there are a couple changes that we're gonna to wanna to make specifically for installing the sailing system and also certain components of this rigging do dual purpose for sailing functions as well. So just to give you a quick overview, you can see that we've got this reflective nylon perimeter line that goes through pad eyes all the way around the perimeter of the boat. Some of these pad eyes are stainless steel if they're gonna be taking sail loads other ones are gonna be nylon, especially if we're gonna be using them as fair leads as well. And it is super important that you install all of this stuff correctly. So for detailed instructions on fastening down these pad eyes and rigging these perimeter lines, make sure that you check out the separate video that I made on that subject. I'm gonna link it on the screen right now, and I'm also gonna put it in the video description. And if there's any discrepancies between what I say in that video and what I show in this video, make sure you follow what I'm showing in this video because that relates specifically to the sailing system. So starting out with the base plate for the mast step, I've gone ahead and unscrewed this. And you can see that this comes with two holes piloted here and here. And if you're building the flat deck version of any of my kayaks, you can just go ahead and use those holes. But if you're gonna be installing this on the ridged deck version of the F1 or the LPB, like I'm doing here today, you're gonna to need to drill two additional five 30 seconds inch holes here and here, right down the center line of the base plate. And you're gonna to need to countersink those a little bit for some flathead screws. And the way you're gonna know that these are in the right place is it's gonna look like this. You're gonna see this little hole right here off to the side it's gonna to be towards the front of the boat, and then these holes are gonna be here, and this is the center line right here. And right now, I've got these spaced an inch and a quarter apart, but I think on the next one that I do, I'm gonna space them more like an inch and three-eighths. 
Now, as far as where to locate this base plate along the length of the kayak, if you're building one of our flat deck designs, you're not gonna have any choices. There's just gonna be one deck beam in this area, and you're gonna to have to put it on top of that because you would have planned for that earlier. But on the ridged deck kayaks, the location of this might change depending on which kayak you're building. So, for example, for our installation here today, I'm putting this on a standard size 14 foot long F1 kayak. And on that particular kayak, you're always gonna have this sitting almost right on top of this deck beam right here. Now, obviously we can't do that in this case because on my personal kayak, I have two different mast bases for two completely different sailing systems. So this is actually pushed back farther than I would normally put it. But if you're doing this on your F1 kayak, you're basically gonna to wanna to put one of these screw holes right in the center of the top of this deck beam location. And then the other one's gonna be a little bit further back. And the reason we're doing it that way is because if you remember when you were constructing the frame, there's a hole for a lashing right about here. And it's really important that when you're setting these screws, you don't accidentally drill down through your lashings. Now, as long as I've got this light down in here, something else I wanna point out is that there's always gonna be a mortise and tenon joint on the back edge of this deck beam right here. And we don't wanna drill down through that because that's gonna weaken the gunnel in this area. So anytime you're installing hardware near a deck beam, you wanna make sure that the closest screw is at least five eighths of an inch back from the edge of the deck beam. And so what that means for this particular installation is that with the center line of the base plate, basically right here, the center of this pad eye is gonna be a little bit further back than what they're gonna recommend in the instructions for this sail, but that's gonna be just fine as long as it's not further back than say an inch or an inch and a half. And if you're installing this somewhere else along the length of the deck where you don't have this concern, I would still recommend locating these pad eyes just a little bit further back than the center line of the base plate right here, because if you put these perfectly in line, I've seen that cause problems with the sail being able to fold down cleanly. Now, before we screw this back down, something else I wanna mention is if you haven't built your boat yet, for the sailing version of this kayak, I'm gonna specify this piece for the deck ridge be a little bit wider and also a little bit stronger. But if you know you're gonna be adding a Falcon sail to your boat, it's not a bad idea to glue on some additional cheek blocks in this area right here to give an even more stable base for this wider base plate right here. So not a big deal if you haven't done that, it'll still work just fine. Just something you might as well do if you don't have a skin on your boat already. So anyways, to fasten this guy down, once you've figured out where you want this on your particular boat, you can go ahead and find the exact center line of the deck ridge right here. You can place the base plate in place. Make sure that this little hole off to the side right here is going towards the front of the kayak and then holding this exactly where you want it to be, you can either mark down the middle here with a pen or you can just grab your pilot drill. Now, before we just go ahead and drill down in here, keep in mind, you're only gonna be setting a one inch deep fastener so you don't need to drill any deeper than one inch. So I would recommend just getting a little piece of tape and wrapping it around so you don't end up drilling too deep. And then as far as the actual pilot size, it just depends on the size of fastener you're using and also whether you're using a taper point bit or a straight bit. I would recommend starting out with one inch long number eight flathead Phillips stainless steel screws. And if you're using a straight bit, you can pilot that with a 764. If you're using a taper bit, technically they say you're supposed to pilot it with a 532nds, but personally, I would probably just use a 1 8 inch taper bit or maybe a 964. So anyways, we're gonna pretend that we piloted this all the way down. And then we can get the screws. And if you wanna put a little bit of sealant in there, that's totally fine. I usually don't do it. Just make sure that it's not something like epoxy or a really intense urethane sealant because you're gonna to wanna to be able to remove this base plate if you need to. 
Now, it's really important that you don't over tighten these screws and strip this out. So I would recommend before you do this on your actual kayak, you grab yourself a piece of scrap wood of the same wood that you used for your deck ridge and you practice tightening these down to make sure that you're not accidentally gonna strip them out. But if for some reason you do end up stripping it out anyways, you can always come back and widen this hole a little bit and you can set a number 10 fastener instead. Just make sure that that number 10 fastener is sitting below the surface of this plate right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the other one. Okay. So next up, you're gonna to wanna to come anywhere from 16 to 24 inches forward of the mast step and screw a nylon pad eye down to the deck ridge. And we're gonna use this as the fair lead for the uphaul line. Now, I know a lot of kayak sailors will like to put a little pulley right here, but I've always found that to be completely unnecessary. There's barely any friction on this piece at all, so there's no reason to get any extra hardware involved. And what's gonna determine exactly how far forward you put this pad eye is just the proximity to your grab loop, because you want this to be as far forward as possible to give you favorable geometry for your uphaul line, but you also don't want it to be directly under the grab loop where it's gonna bang into your knuckles while you're carrying your boat. So for example, on this smaller F1 kayak, the distance from the center of the mass plate to the center of this pad eye is 17 inches, but on a longer kayak like an LPB or maybe a larger size F1, you might be able to get away with a little bit more distance than that. All right, now coming back to the pad eyes that are gonna support the sail stays, this particular sail uses a four stay system. So you're gonna have one pad eye on either side, almost directly in line with the mast base. And then you're gonna have a couple pad eyes further back than that. And the instructions themselves actually come with a full size template that you can lay across your boat, line up with the center of the mast step, and that's gonna show you exactly where to put these eye locations. The only difference, if you're doing it on one of our boats, is that the eyes are gonna be shifted backwards just a little bit for the reasons that I just mentioned a couple minutes ago. And so, if you're doing this on one of our boats with the ridged deck, you're gonna to want to figure out the location for these forward pad eyes first, and then line up the line on the template with the center line of these pad eyes, and then the diagonals on the template are gonna project backwards, and that's gonna show you where you wanna put the ones in the back right here. And the only exception would be if you're building the flat deck version of one of our boats, in which case, these locations are gonna be basically fixed, especially if you're setting it up for the catamaran system, in which case, you can just go ahead and run those lines to these pad eyes wherever they're already set. Now, for the fasteners on these particular pad eyes, you're gonna to wanna to use one and a quarter inch long number eight flathead Phillips stainless steel screws. And if you're piloting into spruce or fir or pine, I would recommend using the normal recommended pilot size for this fastener. But if you're doing this into red cedar, I would recommend going down a 64th of an inch in your pilot size, just because that's a really soft wood and you don't wanna accidentally strip this out. Also, if you're installing these on an F1 or an LPB kayak, I just wanna remind you that the outside surface right here is not the same as the angle of the gunnel, because remember, there's a secondary stringer down here. So when you go to pilot this, you have to remember that you wanna pilot perpendicular to the top of the gunnel, not parallel to the outside of the boat. All right, so moving back a little bit further, about a third of the way between the mast step and the cockpit, you're gonna to come to another nylon pad eye that's partially mounted into the gunnel and also partially screwed into the deck beam. And this particular one is a little bit tricky, so definitely watch the perimeter line installation video before you try to screw this in. But once you've got this in place, the standard deck rigging has you tying a 5 16ths of an inch bungee in a loop over to the other side. But if you're gonna be adding a sail, when you're tying this bungee loop, you also wanna put a little ring on the side of the loop that is closest to the cockpit. And the purpose of this is we're gonna feed the sheet line through this up to the boom, and then it can slide back and forth on this bungee to act as a traveler. Now, coming back to the front of the cockpit, you can see that I've installed two micro clam cleats with fair leads on top of the deck beam that supports the combing. And one of these is gonna be for your uphaul line, the other one is gonna be for your sheet. 
And these are always going to be located five and a half inches out from the center line of the kayak. And if you're doing this on the flat deck version of one of my kayaks, you're just going to put these right on top of the deck stringers on either side. Now, as far as fasteners on these, for the ridged deck version, we're going to be using a three quarter inch number six flathead Phillips stainless steel screw. And we're going to be piloting with a 1 16th of an inch drill bit. But for the flat deck version, we're going to be using a 5 8 inch long screw and then just choosing the appropriate pilot size for a number six fastener. Also, on the ridged deck version only, you need to be careful when you're locating this because notice this cleat is not centered on this deck beam. It's the holes that are centered on the deck beam. And if you were to try to center the cleat on the deck beam and then drill this out, you would drill this back hole out the back of the deck beam, which is obviously not a good thing. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk a little bit more about these cleats because there's a couple different material choices and you've got a couple different styles. So starting out with the material choices, these come in anodized aluminum or they come in plastic. And with your sailing kit, you're going to get ones that are made out of plastic. And these are going to be fine for 95% of people who are putting sails on their kayaks. The only time that you need to go with an aluminum version like this is if you're going to be sailing in winds higher than 25 knots, because I have seen these plastic nylon cleats start to slip in gusts around 30 to 35 miles per hour, which realistically is not the kind of conditions that most people are going to be in. But if you're one of those rare people that does really high wind sailing, you're going to want to switch out these nylon cleats for these anodized aluminum ones. And we do sell these in our store. Now, the other choice you have here is between a closed cleat with a fair lead on the front that's going to guide the rope in like this, or an open cleat like this, where you just pull the rope down into it from the top. Now, the advantage to the closed clam cleats with the fair leads is that they're a lot easier to use because you don't have to look down and physically verify that the rope is going into the notch because the fair leads automatically going to do it for you. And this can really come in handy in stressful situations, especially when you're bracing with your paddle and also trying to adjust your sail lines at the same time. However, the problem with closed clam cleats is that they tend to rejam themselves while you're trying to let out the line, unless you make a conscious effort to push the line ahead of the fair lead before you let it go. And this can turn into a real problem when you're trying to drop your mast in an emergency situation and it only comes about halfway down. And so my advice is that if you're going to go with the closed clam cleats, you really need to train yourself every single time you go to drop your mast. You need to think about leaning forward and pushing that line physically ahead of the cleat. That way the mast doesn't get stuck halfway down. Now, your other option, if you want to avoid that particular problem, is just to install open cleats instead. And the advantage to open cleats is that if you want to release your sheet or your uphaul line, all you've got to do is just swipe your hand across the front deck and all those lines are going to let go. And I've heard people talk about this as a potential safety valve for getting overpowered. And in certain circumstances, I think that might be true, but it doesn't always work out the way that people think it does. because. If you're running downwind and you're actually getting overpowered, which usually means the winds are kicking up around 30 to maybe 40 miles per hour, and you release your uphaul line and your sheet at the same time, the sail isn't going to come down. It's actually going to stay up and it's going to start flapping wildly back and forth. And if you try to sheet it in to pull it down, it's going to put you instantly in the water. And I know that because it's happened to me. And so I feel like that idea of releasing the sheet and letting the sail come around the mast as a depowering mechanism doesn't really work in real life the way that people think it's going to. So that cancels some of the advantages of the open cleats. However, I will admit that in a normal mass drop situation, an open cleat works a heck of a lot better than a closed cleat if you don't mind the disadvantages. Now, as far as what Patrick is shipping out with the kits right now, I believe he has a mixture of closed cleats and open cleats. And the best way to figure out what's going to work for you is just to get out and experiment with the different options in controlled circumstances. 
And the spacing for these hole mounts on the cleats is exactly the same. So if you want a couple extra to play with, you can order them off of our website, or you could probably just ask Patrick and he would throw them in for you as well. Now, coming back down onto the deck immediately in front of the cockpit, the last thing we need to talk about before we install the sail is different options for tying the sail down onto the deck. And I've got a couple different things going on here. The first one is by far the simplest. This is just a length of 3 16 inch bungee cord that's tied onto the deck line with a scaffold knot. And then on the other end, I have this specific hook that comes in. And I like this hook because it tucks in on itself a little bit, which makes it less likely to accidentally come off of this line. And so I feel like this is probably sufficient for most people, but the two things that I don't like about this particular solution is one, it's a little bit farther forward than I want to reach to be able to tie down my sail. And two, it's not 100% positive, meaning that if I was gonna be doing surf launches and surf landings, I definitely wouldn't trust this, and I would go with something that's a little bit more of a positive solution. Although, if you wanted to, you could always carry a separate ball bungee in your PFD, and then when you get to the surf zone, you could tie this down extra well, so it's not gonna come off. So anyways, that's the first option. The second one back here is a little bit more complicated. So on this side, we've got that same micro clam cleat that I showed you earlier. The only difference is that I've trapped this piece of 3 16 bungee cord underneath it. And then over on this side, I've screwed down this micro pad eye and I've put another piece of 3 16 bungee cord underneath that. And then everything meets in the middle in this fancy device, which is called an olive cleat. And the way that an olive cleat functions is it's got a hole in the back side and you can feed the cord through the hole like this and then tighten it down and it's gonna lock anything that's underneath it nice and tight on deck. So what I wanna do here is actually take a moment and strip off this hardware and rebuild this in front of you because the specific geometry of this is kind of important and I wanna make sure that if you do this, you do it right. All right, so pretending like we're doing this completely from scratch, first thing I'm gonna do is get a light and I'm gonna put it inside the boat so I can see where the edges of this deck beam are. And it's really important to put that light directly underneath the deck beam, otherwise it might project the shadow at an angle and then you would make a mistake. So next thing I'm gonna do here is grab some masking tape and I'm gonna put a line of tape directly behind the deck beam and a line of tape directly in front of the deck beam And now I can take the light away and I know where the edges of the deck beam are. Now, just like I said before, we're always gonna locate this cleat five and a half inches out from the center line of the kayak. So I'm gonna come five and a half inches and I'm gonna make a mark. And then I can grab my cleat and with the fair lead facing forward, you wanna set this on here so the holes are centered on this deck beam. And then once you've got this in place, you can grab a drill with a 16th inch drill bit for your pilot, and you can pilot for one of these holes. And then you can grab your number six, three quarter inch screw, and screw it in just a little bit. And then for the back hole, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pilot it. And you're gonna grab your other number six. And we're gonna screw this in just a little bit. And we're not screwing this all the way down because remember, we have to sneak that bungee cord underneath right here. Now, the next thing we need to do is get this micro fair lead and we're gonna screw this to the top of the deck beam about two inches in from the outside of the gunnel. And that two inch measurement is important because if you go any closer to the outside of the gunnel, you start to get into the area where you've got the diagonal peg and all of the joinery for the tenon and you don't wanna be screwing down through any of that stuff. So once again, two inches from the center of this to the outside of the gunnel. And then you can get your 16th inch pilot bit. Pilot one side, 
get the number six by three quarter inch stainless steel fastener. And for this one, it's okay to screw this down all the way. And then we'll do the same thing at the back. And you always want to pilot and screw these one hole at a time. And just a quick side note here, whether you're using a cleat with a fair lead or just an open cleat like this one right here, if you take a minute to carve out the underside of it just a little bit, it's going to sit over that bungee and sit flat on the deck a little bit better. Just be careful that however you do that, you're not doing something stupid that's going to cut off one of your fingers. Okay, so now that we've got these in place, I'm going to go ahead and take off this tape here. And now I'm gonna grab some 3 16 bungee cord and I'm gonna cut myself a four inch section and I'm gonna cut myself a 12 inch section. And then in each of those, I'm gonna tie a knot really close to the end. I'm gonna pull it really tight and then I'm gonna trim the end and burn it just to keep everything nice and tidy. And the shorter section is gonna go underneath this cleat right here right in the center between these two screws and then you can screw this down nice and tight now just like anytime you're screwing down these little fasteners in softwood you do need to get things tight but you definitely don't want to strip them out so if you're worried about putting too much force on this practice this on a scrap of wood before you do it on your actual kayak Okay, perfect. For this one, I'm gonna get this olive cleat right here and I'm gonna feed this through the backside right here. And then you're gonna pull this through and you're gonna tie a knot. And you're not gonna have much room to tie this knot and so that's probably gonna determine exactly where this goes. But what I like to see is for there to be I don't know, about an inch to an inch and a half of space between this knot once it's tightened down and the edge of the cleat right there. So pull that nice and tight and then you can go ahead and trim the extra off. Burn it with a lighter, make sure you don't burn your boat. Okay. So that's the olive cleat side. Now on the other side, we're just gonna take this other piece of 12 inch long 3 16 cord. It's got this little knot right here. And we're gonna put it through here. And obviously we don't want this to be able to slip back out. So you're gonna tie another knot as tight as you possibly can down to this side right here. Perfect. And so after you cut the ends and burn them and make them nice and tidy, all you've got to do to fasten your sail down is, let's say, for example, this kayak pump right here is the sail. You're going to run this line through the olive cleat like this and then pull it back tight. And this is what that looks like from the backside. So this is a super solid tie down. It's also relatively easy to operate from the cockpit. And just to give credit where credit is due, I didn't invent this particular tie down. I first saw this being used by Ginny Callahan of Sea Kayak Baja. So a couple more things I wanna cover here. In addition to putting this bungee underneath this little micro fair lead, you also have the option of putting it under another micro clam cleat. And the time that you might wanna do this is if you wanna add the vang to this kayak sailing system. And we'll talk a little bit more about the vang in a minute and what it's used for. But if you decide to do that, you have the option of mounting a second cleat right here. And then you've got the cleat for the vang, you've got the cleat for your uphaul line or possibly your sheet. And then you can run the bungee between those instead. Now, another thing I wanna mention really quick, just in case you've seen this in one of my YouTube videos or one of the videos in the building course, is that I used to carve out the underside of the cleat and then I would put a bungee loop like this and put the knot 
on the other side right here. So the cleat was pinning this down. And then I put a lashing hook connected out here. And basically I could stretch this bungee over the sail and attach it to the lashing hook. And originally I thought this was a great idea because it was a nice, really sleek integrated system. But the more I got out and started testing it and especially doing self rescues with the sail system, I realized that this is actually a little bit difficult to work with because when you're working quickly in a really challenging situation, it's quite difficult to actually get this over and into this tiny space for the lashing hook. And then if you end up in the water and you're trying to do some type of self rescue, it's really easy to grab the sail like this and actually pull the bungee off the edge of this lashing hook. And then suddenly the sail is flapping in the water and it's really difficult to deal with.